This little international hot rod pickup is just the bomb diggity. I like the paint scheme on there. Some awesome pinstriping. And the owner of this thing drives the dog snot out of it. Nice vintage uh, Dot Rock Cola cooler here in the back. I imagine that is pretty rare. This is a 1936 International. Looks like it's had some uh, top chop done on it. Occasionally, I like to see an original truck. It's just refreshing sometimes. I don't know who let this old stalker in here. How you doing, brother? Good, you? Absolutely doing fine. So tell me about this engine. Well, that's a 261 cubic inch Chevy came out with in 1955, and it's a 235 Big Brother. It's a Siamese cylinder engine. So, so the head has to have steam holes drilled in it. Okay. So is this is basically what they put in the first Corvettes? No, the first Corvettes had 235s, but 235. they had a triple side draft Webers. Okay. This is actually a bigger engine than they put in the Corvettes. And what did this engine come out of? Well, it probably came out of a school bus since it was originally yellow in color. Yeah. And uh, it has a Corvette head on it. Okay. And it has the Corvette handshake. Okay, so it's hopped up a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. So it's about 4.3 liters in today's terminology. And you put your uh, an external uh, oil filter on there. Looks this like this block requires an external oil. Filter. Uh, okay. Now they early the early fifty fives had um, a ball that you used a bypass filter with. Okay. But these are full flow. All the oil goes out of the block through that filter and back to the engine. Okay. Bad day if the hose breaks. <laughs> I bet. I bet. So tell me a little bit about this fire truck. Uh, 57 GMC. 57 GMC. Where'd you, yeah. Where did you find this at? Portland, Tennessee? Out, no, it actually come out of Loboville, Tennessee. Okay. Yeah. And this is on a what chassis did you say? 89 model GMC one ton. Okay, and what engine? 350. Got 350, 700R4 automatic transmission overdrive. Yeah. Uh, the cab and everything, if that's how it looked, the day I bought it. Other Man. than the lettering. We changed the lettering up. We live in Portland. So. <laughs> and so the uh, uh, bed is original to the truck also? No, sir. You built the, I the, built bed. the bed. Wow. You blended it in nicely right there. Can we take a look inside right there? Awesome. So this is just the way it came, huh? Yep. Other than the automatic shifter, <laughs> it had a standard shift in it. Yeah, and you've even got cup holders. Oh, yeah. Heck, yeah. Yeah. My wife said I got to have cup holders and air conditioning. She ain't got the air conditioning yet, but we're working on it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, brother. I love it. Oh, man. Appreciate it. We enjoy it. Trucks are always a big thing here at the Redneck Rumble. This is a great old Survivor truck right here and they've brought their camper.
love this 55 Chevy right here. Survivor paint on it. A little bit of rusty and crusty on it. Can't hardly make it out. But I love seeing this old original lettering on this ES Denny. Republic, Missouri, maybe. Gross weight, 6,000 pounds. Uh, can barely make that out. All hand lettered, looks like. I even like the spare tire back there on the back. Most guys delete that and then put a uh, regular fender on on there, but uh, I kind of dig that look. If y'all have followed the channel for very long, you know that I am a sucker for AD trucks and flatbeds. So this one is checking off two boxes right here this truck is one of the trucks that inspired me to build a flatbed in the first place the gentleman that built this truck started out much like I did with just the cab and front sheet metal and hand fabricated this entire bed I've, uh, I've known this truck for several years now and I never get tired of seeing it. I love this little Model A pickup. This is a 28, 29. But the unusual thing about this truck is that it has been cut down from a sedan right here. So this would have been the back of the sedan. It's been shortened up and made into a truck cab. They did that a lot back uh, during the depression because um, trucks were allotted more gas than cars. So. Um, if you had a gas ration sticker in your window, if you were a truck, you got more gas than, than a car because they used the trucks for working. Another interesting little tidbit right here. This appears to be a 26, 27 Model T bed. The trucks are out in force here today. And there's some pretty unusual stuff here. I'm liking the color on this 55 Chevy right here. Four wheel drive. Here's a cab over. Ford. Flatbed. This I saw cruising by earlier, and this is one of my favorite things here today. It's an old milk truck. Tons of room right there to haul stuff. Wearing its original patina. And looks like a place there to call, haul a couple of bikes there in the back. And I will show you one very, very cool detail about this little truck. Check out this gear shift knob. Looks like a little baby bottle of milk. Man, I just love this thing. 
This may very well be my favorite thing here today. So far at the show, this has been my favorite rat rod. This is a Model A Ford, but it's a little different than your typical Model A. This started out life as a fire truck or a service truck of some sort. The, the cowling on this truck is, tip, is different than your typical uh, Model A pickup. Oftentimes this type of cowling was found on fire trucks, minus the door posts and stuff right here. It would just be that cow and it would be a open cab. Outstanding little Ford F100 right here. Basic black with cream wheels. Just a really good driver, looks like. Looks like maybe cedar boards there in the bed. Great little truck. People drag everything out to come to this show. Here's an old, looks like a fire truck. They've converted it to a Texaco themed service truck. There is everything at this show from a Greyhound bus to this blown Boss 598 international pickup. Here is a slam to the ground, bad to the bone flatbed. LS Power GMC. I'm going to show y'all the coolest feature of this truck. Got a barbecue grill down here. And this section right here swings out from beside the engine, makes a table. And they've got a couple of stools that they haul around with them so that they'll have a place to sit and eat when they get their uh, hot dogs cooked. There is every kind of truck you can imagine here today. From slam to the ground cruisers to this lifted Chevy pickup. And right here you can see a little before and after. But what really sets this one apart is all the little details. And he's pulling a trailer with a vintage Triumph on it. This thing, the detail on this Triumph is unbelievable. And look at this little detail right here where he's notched out of the bed for the rear tire. Incredible little bike here. Just look at all that polished brass and copper. I've seen this truck 
all over the place at car shows. It is driven and loved well, I can tell. I never get tired of seeing it. There's just a plethora of trucks here today from mile to wild. This little Dodge pickup and camper right back here to match is a nice little combo. Here's another nice clean build right here. Love that perfect blue patina on this truck. And a nice wheel and tire combination right there. Remember, when you pull up next to a crusty old truck at the red light, you better think twice before you challenge him because there's no replacement for displacement. I've not seen the hot rod bus in a few years. I love this thing. It's got up on the roof up there in neon hot rod bus and it lights up at nighttime and you can see them cruising around at shows, having a good time. Awesome wood interior. A lot of neat little details on there like these bottle caps all over the place. The Southeast Tennessee C10 Club set up over here and they've got several rides representing here today. C10s and Blazers, K5s from the 60s through the 80s. They're just scattered about here. Here's a trio of long beds over here on this left-hand side. And over here on this side is awesome little black K5 Blazer. But my favorite of the C10s here today of that body style this little K5 Blazer. There's always several Diamond T trucks on this road. Every time I've been to the Rumble, seems like there's uh, they take up this spot right here. Well, there's a, a ramp bed over here's a little pickup next to it is a little box truck I want you to look at this little turn signal right here it's cable operated when the driver got ready to turn he pulled that cable or lever inside and it would pop those reflectors up oh here's another Diamond T pickup. When's the last time you saw a Diamond T? Let alone that many at the same show. Right down the aisle right here, here is yet another ramp bed truck. And over here is a four wheel drive Diamond T.
as I said before, you can find every kind of truck here today. This white truck, probably not uh, politically correct nowadays, but neither is the Redneck Rumble. This is one of my favorite trucks here and probably one of my favorite vehicles here altogether. Tons of custom work on this little pickup. All kinds of uh, glitter, paint, pinstriping, chrome reverse wheels. Very period correct. Don't see too many of these old internationals fixed up. Like the way this one's lowered. Yeah. Trucks everywhere here. This little El Camino's over here just chilling in the shade. Looks like they scored big at the swap meet. And I guess these are technically trucks. What would you think if you called for an Uber and a 454 big block powered and slammed to the ground dually showed up. Hey y'all, thanks for watching and checking out some of my favorite trucks at the Spring Redneck Rumble 2021. Until next time, y'all get out there and build something and keep on trucking.